and welcome back to the Faith and Freedom series. Last time we finished outlining conservative and progressive perspectives of our rights and declaration. And so today, we will be discussing how we can ensure that our rights endure from generation to generation. There are several things that come to mind from authorities ranging from historical, such as the Founding Fathers, to more contemporary, namely Robert Putnam's view on social capital. And so I'll start with the Founding Fathers. Both Washington and Jefferson spoke of the importance of religion in maintaining our rights. Washington called faith and morality an indispensable support to our democracy in his farewell address. And in his first inaugural address, the a-religious Jefferson stated our Republican principles were enlightened by a, quote, benign religion professed indeed and practiced. Jefferson and Washington saw religion as fundamental to maintaining our rights and liberties. Then there's Alexis de Tocqueville, a French political sociologist who wrote a book called Democracy in America. This book detailed his observations during his time traveling throughout the United States in the 1830s, and he determined that what maintained our democratic society was that people made groups and associations, linking them together, and that in early America, the universal association that all had in common was the church. Now, not necessarily the same church, and not necessarily with the same customs, but the profuse spread of the church helped with establishing a society that respected laws, valued liberty, and put trust outside of government and human leadership. Tocqueville determined virtue was quintessential to maintaining liberty, and that faith and social engagement worked to help spread virtue. Lincoln, his, in his speech on the perpetuation of political institutions, concluded legal virtue, or as he put it, reverence for the law, was essential. He believed that the U.S. would only fall and fail its mission if the people betrayed their values, forgot their history, gave into lawlessness, and followed individuals solely based on their charisma, kind of like how ancient Romans followed Caesar. Which makes sense. If people disregard the law, government then has to take more extreme measures to enforce it. If society is lawless, people will oppress our basic rights individually. And to protect us, then government naturally will become stronger and more robust. When Benjamin Franklin stated, the U.S. is a republic if you can keep it, this places the burden primarily on you and me as citizens, the people. It is up to the people to maintain our rights and liberties. Robert Putin wrote an article titled, Bowling Alone, the decline of American social capital. And in this, he details how public participation in religious groups, service groups, bowl, and even bowling leagues has been in decline for the past couple decades. Americans are engaging in the public sphere less and less, and there's debate on whether social media has been an adequate replacement. Sure, it's easier to connect. You can like friend people that you haven't seen since elementary school and things along those lines, but it's also easier to put yourself into an echo chamber of self-confirmation by alienating those you disagree with. As Americans, it is our duty to be active in society. Not only does this help us engage with different people teaching us about society, but that is how we spread unity and common ideals. The church has been the biggest support for this historically, clearly communicating virtue and ideals to maintain a lawful society. Having faith and spreading that through interaction, essentially the Great Commission, is what spreads a norm not just to preserving liberty, but selflessness. In the words of Calvin Coolidge, governments do not make ideals but ideals make governments. And that's really the central message of this series. To preserve our rights and freedoms, we need to stay tied to the ideals that establish them. To do this, it is imperative that we rely on their source, and God is that source. Our challenge then is to think about how you and I can take an active role in spreading these ideals of faith and freedom, spreading the very idea that undergirds our rights and liberties as Americans. It's been great speaking with you all these past couple weeks. I hope you've enjoyed this series and hope you all are staying safe and healthy during this time.